Tower, Air Coop 99055, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Hi guys, today I will tell you about a system that we can consider as the brain of the gas turbine engine. I will try to explain with examples very close to us so that you can understand what this system is for. First of all, most of you are familiar with the ECU, the engine control unit, in our cars. As you know, we only have to press the gas while the ECU manages many functions in our engine. When the malfunctions in the engine are reported to us as a caution, we are aware of the existence of the problem in the engine. This system, which I will explain today, actually a much more advanced than automobile engine control system. Before starting to explain the system with simple examples, let's start by talking about how aircraft engines and systems were managed in the past. Beginning in the years when airplanes were first invented, engine control systems consisted of simple mechanical throttle links physically attached to the engine. By moving the engine throttles pilots could control fuel flow, thrust, and many other engine parameters. While the pilots were adjusting the speed of the engine with the throttle, changes in the speed of the aircraft, atmospheric pressure and temperature factors could often have serious negative effects on the performance of the engine due to insensitive mechanical systems. Mechanical and analog control systems, which were developed and started to be used with the increase in the speed and altitude of the aircraft in the following years, could not solve the problem too. Because the mechanical and analog systems did not work with high precision and malfunction frequently due to their nature, the incompatibility between engine speed and atmospheric conditions was causing flight safety to be in danger. While the pilots were struggling with the malfunctions caused by the mechanical systems, they could not concentrate on the flight most of the time. In addition, when the pilots' responses to sudden mechanical failures were often late, were resulting drop aircraft and in the lose of the pilot life. The engines of airplanes continued to be driven entirely by mechanical or analog engine control to the 1960s. Integrateds that emerged at the beginning of the 60s would cause a complete revolution in both industry and aviation, unexpectedly. The electronic circuits that emerged with the invention of the Integrateds allowed the rapid development of digital engine control systems in aviation and as a result of were first used in Concorde's Rolls-Royce engines. This situation, which we can also describe as the use of primitive computers in aircrafts, has revolutionized the safety of aircrafts. With the introduction of digital engine systems, which are the first examples of artificial intelligence, in both the military and civil aviation industries, flight safety has increased significantly and especially by reduced the workload of pilots considerably, allowing them to focus more on flying. Digital engine controls are developed over the years, and they are evolved into systems known as FADEC, Full Authority Digital Engine Control, in the 70s. The system we call FADEC is actually the common name of all engine management and detection system parts installed on the engine. This system processes many parameters such as speed, temperature, pressure and so on, which it receives from the aircraft and the engine, and uses it for the coordinated operation of the engine systems. In this video, the FADEX system will be explained according to the Boeing CFM 56-7B engine type. There are basically three main parts of the system which are the electronic engine control known as EEC, the hydromechanical unit short known MU and the alternator. These three units in the FADEX system are similar to the functioning of some organs in the human anatomy. For example, the human brain collects all the information and signals in the body and directs the body by sending the necessary commands to the relevant organs. Electronic engine control, just like the brain does in the human body, it detects all motor information and signals and processes them and sends them as commands to the parts connected to it. We can express the HMU, which is another important part of the FADEX system, as the heart in the human body. The heart sends the blood to our hands, feet, etc. with the signals it receives from the brain. It pumps our organs and makes them perform their functions. The HMU, on the other hand, sends the fuel to the relevant subparts with the signals it receives from the EEC, allowing them to move mechanically. The alternator, which is the energy source of the FADEX system, ensures the operation of the system with the electrical energy it produces. We can compare this unit to the digestive system that produces energy for our body. 
For the sensors in the FADEX system, we can say nerve cells under the skin in human body. We can actually think of FADEX systems as an artificial intelligence. The main tasks of the FADEX system can be listed as follows. 1. Transmission of engine data to cockpit indicators, instantaneous monitoring of engine status. 2. Digitally recording the records of the maintenance performed on the engine and obtaining the fault records as a report when necessary. 3. Elimination of non-mechanical digital faults in the engine. 4. By limiting the fuel entering the engine, ensuring that the N1 and N2 compressors remain within the rotation limits, that is, preventing the overspeed situation. 5. Controlling the engine parameters during aircraft ground running and preventing the engine from exceeding the starting EGT, i.e. exhaust gas temperature limits. 6. Preventing the engine from stalling or surge by controlling the compressor air flow. 7. Ensuring safe operation by keeping turbine clearance within limits. 8. Checking the throttle interlock solenoid. 9. Have a reporting system to help maintenance personnel quickly troubleshoot recorded faults, among its most important duties. All of these mentioned controls are made instantly by the FADEX system. The system is so fast that all parameters are analyzed 70 times per second. The FADEX system manages the engine thrust in two different modes, manual and minus automatic thrust. In other words, while the FADEX system performs the mechanical movements given by the pilot in the throttle in normal situations, it automatically manages the engine controls independently of the pilots in extreme situations such as atmospheric condition changes and engine failures that the pilot is not aware of. Most of the time, the pilots are not aware of these changes made by the FADEX system, and sometimes they are processed as a fault record in the display unit's database. In this way, the system can be said to be the biggest assistant of the pilots. Let's take a closer look at the parts of the FADEX system, Perhaps the most important unit within the FADEX system is an electronic engine control EEC, unit containing two identical computers. It is mounted on the EEC fan case. There are two separate electronic circuits within the EEC known as channel A and channel B. When channel A is deactivate, channel B is activated as a backup and the engine continues the operation. EEC electronically performs engine control calculations and instantaneous monitors engine condition. In addition, EEC directly manages engine subsystems such as engine start, ignition control, engine shutdown, fuel control via HMU, turbine active clearance control, variable bleed valve, variable stator vanes and thrust reverser. Another part of the FADEX system, HMU, is the unit known as the Hydro Minus Mechanical Unit. This unit is mounted on the left rear side of the accessory gearbox. It is a unit that we can express as a digitally controlled a mechanical unit. It converts electrical signals from the EEC into fluid pressure to move the engine's valves and actuators. Here, the fluid used by the HMU is the fuel taken from the engine fuel system. HMU drives valves such as variable bleed valve, variable stator vanes, transient bleed valve, High pressure turbine clearance control valve and low pressure turbine clearance control valve for turbine clearance control. When the valves we mentioned complete their movements, a feedback signal goes to the EEC. T12, T25, T3, T49.5 temperature information, pressure and N1, N2 compressor rotation control signals received from the motor are sent to the EEC. By way of FADEX system sensors sent fuel flow, oil temperature, oil pressure, engine pressure and temperature information to the EEC. Another main part of the FADEX system is the EEC alternator. It provides electrical power to the EEC unit as its energy source. The accessory is mounted on the front of the gearbox. The EEC alternator powers the EEC at 12% higher engine speeds than the N2 foot compressor. At speeds less than 12%, the EEC takes 115 V AC power from the aircraft electrical system. The EEC shut off when the engine is stopped. Let's take a look at the advantages of FADEC, more fuel efficiency by adjusting the fuel according to atmospheric conditions, automatic engine protection against two of the pilot's limit out operations, more flight safety due to backup system use, smooth engine operation with safe throttle settings,
semi-automatic engine start, more coordinated operation of the engine with aircraft systems, long-term monitoring of the engine and diagnosing negativities and taking precautions. To relieve of the pilot by reducing the number of parameters to be monitored by the crew, safety limitation of system even in certain fault conditions, enabling a system to operate within the safety limitation even in certain failure conditions can be summarized as Disadvantages of the FADEX system Fully authorized digital engine controls have no possibility to manually override by the pilot, as they give full authority over the operating parameters of the engine to the computer's control. If the FADEC fails completely, the engine stops. If the FADEC fails completely, pilots cannot use the throttle or other functions to restart the engine. Compared to hydromechanical, analog or manual control systems, the system is very complex. In an emergency, for example, close ground contact, a non-FADEC engine can produce significantly more than its rated thrust with maximum response to the throttle control, while a FADEC engine will always operate within its limits. Yes guys, I tried to explain the FADEC system simply today. I chose this topic because this system is widely used in modern aviation in general. The information mentioned in the video is compiled from technical books B737-600, 700, 800, 900 and system information on the internet. Hope to meet you in my new videos, goodbye. Disadvantages of the FADEX system, fully authorized digital engine controls have no possibility to manually override by the pilot, as they give full authority over the operating parameters of the engine to the computer's control. If the FADEX fails completely, the engine stops. If the FADEX fails completely, pilots cannot use the throttle or other functions to restart the engine. Compared to hydromechanical, analog or manual control systems, the system is very complex. In an emergency, for example, close ground contact, a non-FADEC engine can produce significantly more than its rated thrust with maximum response to the throttle control, while a FADEC engine will always operate within its limits.